You all probably know about the kite experiment, which is a scientific experiment in which a kite with a pointed conductive wire attached to its apex was flown near thunderclouds to collect electricity from the air and conducted down the wet kite string to the ground. It was proposed and may have been conducted by Benjamin Franklin. Since then, electricity has become an integral part of our lives, and electricians play an essential part in keeping electricity working for us. What are the tricks of the trade electricians use? These are electrician tricks of the trade you need to know about. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. If you're already an electrician running your own business or just about to start and grow your own electrical business, you must learn the four critical things electrical business owners wish they had learned before starting an electrical business so you don't make the same mistakes. Electrician Accelerator has put together a free training video you can watch for free right now that will show you exactly how to start, grow, and build your electrical business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work, free up your time, all whilst reducing stress levels and allowing you to have sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you will also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth and referrals, how to stop competing on price with other electricians and escape your competition how to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales, how to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Click on the link in the description below the video. Use the end of a hanger to find a drilling location. Still measuring from the foundations to find the location to drill up a wall. Try this. Take an insulation hanger or a coat hanger. Snip off the end at a 45 degree angle, insert it into your drill and make a small hole at a 45 degree angle on the floor next to the molding. Homeowners never notice the hole because it's too small. Prevention of insulation itch. While it would be great if all electrical work happened on the habitable side of the walls, electricians more than almost any other tradesman end up right up close with the sawdust and insulation. Besides wanting to wear a face mask and eye protection, that stuff is incredibly itchy and can cause major skin irritation. Even wearing long sleeves, it still gets up around your collar and onto your face and hands. The solution the solution to this is a bottle of baby powder or a small box of cornstarch. Coat your exposed skin a little way under collars and sleeve ends. Make sure to get your face and ears while keeping it out of your eyes. This protective layer will keep the insulation from settling directly on your skin, preventing irritation and itching. Carry a strong magnet. The entire house wiring premise requires you to work behind the walls and ceilings. You are constantly tracing old wires, running new wires, working from small holes in the dry wall and trying to line everything up perfectly from both sides. There are dozens of tricks for drawing lines and punching small holes to mark your way, but there's one very useful trick that doesn't require any permanent changes at all. Magnets can detect ferrous metal components and are easily detected through lightweight building materials like wood, tile, drywall, and etc. With a magnet, you can look for studs. Stud finders are notoriously hard on batteries, which means they are always running out at inopportune moments and needing to be recharged. Rather than letting this slow down your project, simply carry a strong magnet in your kit. Tie a lightweight piece of string to your magnet and dangle it along the wall you're inspecting. When the magnet responds, there's something ferrous behind the wall. This also works in circumstances where the surface, coating, or material of the wall is challenging even for a fully charged stud finder. As a fishing guide, the next time you're fishing down the backside of a wall, there's no need to worry about it going astray. You may already be be using the heavy nut trick to keep the string pulled directly downward. You can double the effectiveness of this method by using a magnet in your box opening to guide the line down as a retrieval method. Because you are constantly working in the in-between spaces, it's unfortunately easy to lose small objects into unreachable places. Once again, the magnet can help, as long as the lost items were ferrous. Depending on the space you're working with, you can attach the magnet to a string or a slender stick to pull your lost items back to you. Use a hot air gun to aid in bending PVC conduits. A hot air gun comes in handy when you need a quick bend for PVC conduit. Just heat the area until pliable and then make your bend. Larger conduits can bend by inserting the area of the conduit through a 3 or 4 inch PVC T and the hot air gun in the remaining opening in the T, leaving the conduit in the T until it's bendable. Jack chain instead of string. The problem with string is that it's usually made of soft fibers that can catch on rough things 
things, like insulation and unfinished wood. Fishing with string can be incredibly helpful, but sometimes another method is more appropriate, especially in cases where you want to exert a little force on your fishing string. A jack chain can work in its stead. The weight helps it fall straight down and slide over obstacles without hanging, and the sturdiness means you can give it a pull without risking your connection. Making large holes without proper drill bits. When you need to make large holes for conduits and you don't have a large drill bit, try this. Make your template where you want to drill and drill a series of holes around the exterior. Follow up with one center hole and be sure you're level. Finish with a piece of one half rigid and a hammer to bang out the hole clean. Works every time. Velcro tester holder. Many electricians enjoy working alone and a vast majority of work orders aren't big enough for needing two electricians on the task. However, there are always those few times when you wish you had a third or fourth hand to hold your tester or a spare wire. Many solutions for this common conundrum have been proposed involving tape, mounting nails, and so on. One clever solution is to sew a patch of Velcro onto your jacket sleeves and become your own extra pair of hands. Glue Velcro to the opposite texture onto the backs of your testers, and you can hold your device in view like a wristwatch while you work. Use paper to hold a screw on a screwdriver. Using a piece of paper about one half square inch, wrap the head of a screwdriver and slip it into the slot on the screw. This will work best when the slot is deep. You may have to bend paper once to tighten the slot. This also works for nut drivers. Use a new light bulb to replace a broken off old light bulb. First, test to see if the circuit is dead. Clean the broken particles that remain in the socket with a screwdriver or pliers, then insert the new light bulb into the socket, twisting in reverse, as this will remove the broken end of the old light bulb. Usually, this is the hardest part to take out. This should clean out all the damaged parts, leaving the socket ready for the new light bulb. Tidy multiple switch wiring. When dealing with multiple switches, any form of streamlining you can manage will help to reduce the clutter of extra wires hitting the cluster of connections. An interesting thing to consider in this circumstance is that wires don't have to be cut to make contact, especially for connection shared between the switches. Rather than carefully pigtailing the hot wire to each switch, simply cut your hot wire extra long. Along with the continuous grounding wire, strip a three-quarter inch section of the sheathing where you want to connect each switch, and hook the exposed area onto the screw terminal. Then connect the next switch in the same way. At the final switch, loop the tie wire clockwise around the screw as usual. Use cotton string to cut PVC. When cutting exposed PVC pipe conduits buried in a ditch, you can use a cotton string instead of a hacksaw or a handsaw. Wrap the string, such as the kind contractors use for form lines, halfway around the conduit, and seesaw the ends. The friction will cut the PVC cleanly, as quickly as a hacksaw, and does not require the space. Nylon string will not work because nylon and the PVC will melt together. Unsheath before boxing. Contrary to popular practice, it is much harder to strip wires once they're inside the box. It may seem more efficient at the time to push them through sheathed, but you're only setting yourself or another electrician up for trouble down the road. An overall time-saving best practice is to always strip your cable sheathing before pushing them into the box knockouts. Measure carefully, because you will need at least a fourth of an inch of sheathing still in the box. This is also a good time to mention the most common pieces of electrician advice. Always leave yourself extra slack. That's it. Do you know of any other tricks of the trade electricians should know about? Please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. Until we see you back again, take care.